Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. tonight eastern daylight time and we got a guest of course as uh, we like to put on the air at least once a week ladies and gentlemen from out west coast way in the lovely town that's too expensive to live in anymore san francisco california hello there larry brown Hello, Alex. Yes, the uh, I, the New York Times apparently just named us the most expensive rental market in the country. Oh, really? Yeah. But really, how expensive do they say? Uh, I think the average one bedroom is thirty six hundred. Oh, jeez, Almighty! And then uh, this could double because in the next couple of months, uh, Airbnb and Uber and Lyft are supposed to have their IPOs out here, so that'll create even more. Millionaires. Oh. When Twitter had their IPO a few years ago, it created 1,200 millionaires overnight in San Francisco. So that's, I guess, the problem. So what happens to, uh, well, Larry Brown, of course, has a uh, rent control department, right? Yes. And they would, they're, they, every day they say a little prayer at your landlord's home to have you die. Yes, I keep looking for gas leaks around here. <laughs> that, that, you know, cheese almighty. You know, I mean, San Francisco was never a cheap town. No, it was always expensive, but now it's just insane. And uh, Well, how did, it, how did it drive the prices up because all of a sudden you got these millionaires because they were just willing to pay extraordinary yeah, they'll prices. pay anything and they don't they don't want to buy they said they don't like to buy homes they just like to rent so they'll pay anything so, so they'll pay anything yeah well how did i read the the average salary at facebook's two hundred and forty thousand. wow wow see here's what i don't get all right um uh, uh, I, I never knew from things like rent control and uh, rent stabilized until I came to New York mm -hmm. uh, and started having this problem with this apartment. I, I didn't know from uh, uh, stabilized apartments and rent control. How does rent control work in San Francisco? I never asked. I just, they said, here's the rent. I said, that sounds reasonable, and I paid it, you know? Okay, uh, it's yeah. You pay uh, like when I rent when I rented this place in the mid '80s, it yeah. was two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, and uh, rent control was in effect, so my two hundred fifty dollars could be raised. They can raise it like the cost of living, which is like one point two percent a year, is nothing. But yeah. if I leave the apartment, if I vacate it, then they can raise it to whatever they want for the next tenant. Oh, really? So in other yeah. words, if you left, so they have they have a real a real a need to kick out rent control tenants. So. so so in other words, if you were to leave that apartment right now, it would be thirty two hundred. Thirty two hundred, and you're paying uh five fifty. <laughs> oh God. They want you to die, do they? Want you to die? <laughs> well, there's three other dinosaurs in this building that have been here longer than me. <laughs> really, really. Well, they, as you say, they're hoping for a gas explosion. Well, uh, sometimes look, they offered my neighbor ten years ago. They offered her eighty thousand dollars just to go, and she said no. No, of course not. Now, can you sublet your apartment? No, that that would be grounds for eviction. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're well, not. If I could, I could make a lot of money off it. You're not going anywhere. I'm stuck here, and I don't particularly like living here. <laughs> yeah, but you're stuck. I mean, you've got a great rent. Yeah. You know. Uh, geez, Almighty, that's wonderful. 
That's wonderful. Well, we have a thing here called uh, rent. Well, there's rent control, but that is. Yeah, your sounds much more complex than this. Well, it's not that that complex. Okay, uh, the only people that make it complex are unscrupulous landlords who would like to circumvent the situation. Uh, but there are two kinds of things. There's rent control, which you don't get anymore. Okay, that is grandfathered in for people who I think. I don't know when rent control ended, but when it ended, they still remained rent control. Now, I know people who have had families in this building since 1935, okay? <laughs> and what you can do with rent control is you can will your uh, apartment to somebody. In other words, if you Let's die... Yeah, it's an asset. If you die, they can't suddenly come in and raise the rent or do whatever. It can. Uh, the, I have a woman on the first floor whose parents died and left her the apartment. And the rent on her apartment has got to be something like, I'd say if it, with raises and everything, maybe a $800 a month. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to get her out in the worst way. She had to go to court. She had to fight it. And she had to, you know, but she kept the apartment and she's got it for, I don't know, bupkis. Okay. Now, then there's this thing called rent stabilization. That came in after rent control. And rent stabilization was that it, it basically stabilized the price. In other words, you could raise it every so much uh, as often as you, you know, once every, I think, two years, three years, you were able to raise it by a percentage, okay? Mm -hmm. But you couldn't take it out of, out of rent stabilization. The only thing that would take it out of rent stabilization is, is somehow the rent went over a certain amount, and that amount can, changes every year because it, it raises. It, it's very, it, you are right, it is kind of complex. But what yeah. it is basically is that the guy who rented this apartment originally uh, rented it from the landlords who said it wasn't a rent-stabilized apartment when in fact it was. And so that's what he's suing them about. What we're suing him about is he then rented it out to us like he was a landlord, okay? We signed a lease for three years, and then later on he said, oh, no, it's a sublet. Well, it wasn't a sublet because he rented to us for three years. Sublets are only two years. And under sublets, you can't raise the rent from what you're paying for it. In other words, the idea is you want to go move to California for a year. So you want to sublet your apartment. Well, you can mm -hmm. sublet it. Um, uh, landlords cannot unreasonably withhold the ability to sublet. But you can't sublet for double what you're paying for it. So that, that, that uh, there are a lot of people, and uh, I think Charlie Rangel, uh, our former congressman from Harlem, was, got caught in this. He, uh, he, did, the, he did this whole thing where he... Uh, uh, you know, had four apartments uh, that were rent stabilized that he then rented out for double, triple what he was paying for it and made a profit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what the guy did who leased us this apartment or sublet it, he says now, after the fact. And, and, uh, and that's considered what's called illusory tenancy. So... He hadn't lived here for close to eight years, something like that. He just kept renting it out at like double the rate he was paying for it, and he was not paying the right rate because it should have been rent stabilized. So, is that, am I making any sense here? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how long it's dragged out. <laughs> oh, I, I we're in our uh, what is this? Is this six years? Something like that? Six years? Seven years? I don't know how many years now. It's 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 ridiculous i have to go back and look and figure out how many years it's been um and in the meantime we haven't paid any rent here because obviously there's nobody to pay rent to we don't have a lease with anybody you know 
Um, so uh, I would think the landlord would want to solve this thing as fast as possible so that he, we, he can start charging us rent. And uh, But then we have to know how much the rent's going to be because he this is a rent-stabilized apartment house up to a point. Uh, and uh, but they they made it rent stabilized so that they could get benefits and so on. So we don't know how much we would have to pay. So you know, apparently, uh, just tell us you know when we start paying rent and how much that rent should be legally. It, it's well, that's great. You're living for free. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and people say, well, are you are you putting the money away in case they ask for it? Well, what? We don't owe anybody any money. We didn't sign a lease. That's, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, we don't have a lease on this. We want a lease, you know. We want uh, to know what the rent is going to be, and we also want what this guy has to do, which is if you sublet, if, if you rather uh, le lease a, an apartment that should be a sublet and is under rent stabilization, then you owe us treble damages. So he has to pay back the difference between what he was paying and what we were paying, and then three times that. Oh, he's screwed. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we're the only ones with any real case here. And if he prevails over the landlords and proves that he should have been paying lower rent, then the difference between what we were paying is based on that lower rent. So let's say they say you only owe he only owes six hundred dollars a month because it should have been five when he started. Let's say six, seven, eight, whatever. That could amount to like uh, oh I don't know what something like three thousand dollars times um, times uh, three times thirty months. Two hundred seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> So that's you're, you're set for life. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you've got a good deal. Right now we've got an even better deal. I think so. Yeah. Jeez. You know, and, but but to, you know, to the landlord's credit, uh, the super when something breaks comes and fixes it for us. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's not like they're trying to push us out. You know, because they know if they do that, then they're really in trouble. You know, so. Yeah, then you can sue them. And I don't know. Uh, who, who who knows? I mean, everybody says, well, you don't want this thing resolved anytime soon, do you? And there's part of me that goes, you know, I like nesting, right? And I like yeah. the idea. I don't feel that I live in this apartment, you know, that I'm only somehow squatting. You know what I'm saying? So right. uh, yeah. I would like I would like some resolution to it. And he just goes on. Oh, and on and on. Oh, uh, on the twenty seventh of this month, they they have a uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's when they all get together and try to discuss mediation? And uh, uh, but this mediation has been called off five times, something like that. I don't know. The last one was uh, a year ago or something like that. <laughs> So you know Let's they say call it off for another year. They say this is a uh, this is a mandatory mediation. Okay, so it's a mandatory mediation, and then they'll make a, a move that they want to hold it off. And I don't know who's who's holding it off. You know, we're ready to go. We're ready to you know argue this whole thing. And then so far, but you know we do pay rent because we owe we paid uh, we've paid. Fifty-six thousand dollars in legal fees. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's wow. But you think about that over the time, and we're paying like eight hundred dollars a month in legal fees, and that's the rent. You know, <laughs> uh, it's it's crazy. It is just nuts. You know, um, and I I people always hear me talking about this and going, well, gee, why why you know, are you talking about that again? But it permeates my life, you know. So. Well, it's a great story. I mean, it, <laughs> this, could, this is going to be like a landmark case. Well, I've never, you know, I've never really outside of a few people threatening to sue me now and then when I was doing radio. Uh, I've never really had any real legal problems. 
you know, or a legal situation. You know, I've never had to sue a landlord or whatever. So I'm not used to this whole legal thing. And here's the thing about legal that bothers me. Years ago, I had a lawyer. His name was uh, 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 Mr. Turtle, <laughs> which is not a good name for a lawyer. <laughs> Because when you threaten people, you don't want to have to say to them, <laughs> the <turtle. laughs> you know, if you fuck around with me, you're going to have to talk to my lawyer, Mr. <laughs> turtle. You know, I always say Mr. Turtle in a droopy dog voice, Mr. Turtle. <laughs> um, uh, and and it, 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 But I always love saying my next lawyer, everybody knows this story, my next lawyer uh, was named Reamer. Now that's a good name for a lawyer, you know. I remember him. Yeah, yeah. You want to you want to deal with my lawyer? You're going to have to deal with Mister Reamer. <laughs> and the funny part was his mother was a lawyer, and she ran a divorce practice, and she was in business with another guy, and it was the divorce practice of Skinner and Reamer. <laughs> So anyway, but anyway, so so uh, uh, um, uh, I ha you know I had this lawyer, Mister Turtle, and one day I, I I looked at my calendar when Fred Reamer's birthday, not Fred Reamer, uh, what was his, uh, not Reamer, excuse me, Mister Turtle, uh, Joel Turtle, Joel Turtle Turtle's birthday, so I <laughs> I I call him up and I wish him a happy birthday. A month later, Gary gets a bill for me calling him to wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> and I learned then, you never call a lawyer. You never write a lawyer an email. Email's been a boon. Like last month, he wrote us an email to tell us what was happening with the mediation. Marjorie got a bill for $44. What for? Yeah. The email. Yeah. So in my next life, I want to come back as a fucking lawyer, man. That's a license to kill. So Jeez. saying happy birthday is a billable hour. I, I, yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, they, they, they charge for everything. We had this one thing he wrote. Uh, that we got a bill for twelve thousand dollars on. It was like a, a memorandum or something to the court about what the case was about. I mean, it's beautiful. If I send it to you, you would look at it and go, "Oh, Bennett's got it made," <laughs> because he wrote such yeah. a compelling case. Um, so that was kind of worth the twelve thousand dollars, but it's only like fifteen pages long. You know. So I, but but it was it was a it was a, it was a college thesis. It looked like you know, so, but so so we have different rental situations here in New York. And my um, main lawyer, not the lawyer we actually use at the firm, but the main lawyer, the guy who runs the firm, when we first met him, said to us that when he goes to law conventions, he t they say, "What kind of law do you do?" And he says, I do, uh, what do you call it? I do um, 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 rental and, la you know, landlord and, and tenant uh, law. And they said, what's that? Because outside of New York, people don't practice that. Because here, the landlords are such fucking crooks that they, that, that, that law... Um, practice was uh, was important to happen so there are a lot of them around and our guy does landlords and tenants but he doesn't do landlords he just does the tenants because he said to do landlords would then be kind of a conflict of interest mm -hmm. uh, but this is the only city where you actually have law practices that deal with rentals and landlords and tenants and things like that in San Francisco, you just go to a normal lawyer and he'd look up the laws and he'd say, okay, we'll go to court on that. Yeah. You know, 
But there are guys here who specialize in that. And if you go... That's a real specialty. Oh, absolutely. Because it's very, it's very complex law. And, um, um, y you know, I mean, it, it's, it's quite, a, quite a deal. I mean, I just, I'm amazed by it. Uh, yeah. I thought I read years ago that there were people on Park Avenue that when rent had places when rent control started there that were paying like a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> well, I had a uh, I had a lady I knew who had a place on <laughs> on um, uh, on not West End but on uh, either Amsterdam or Broadway, okay, in the in the, like the the sixties, and it was a beautiful apartment. I mean, it was gorgeous, and it was like five rooms, and it was it was spacious, okay. And um, they then said, "Well, the place is going to go condo." And um, she bought it for. I'm trying to remember how much, but I think it was something like a hundred thousand dollars to buy into the condo. Hmm. And a year later, that condo was worth a million. Holy crap. And I said to her, I said, so you're going to sell? And she says, why? I've never lived in an apartment this expensive before. <laughs> she said, there's no reason for me to do it. She says, you know, yeah, the price is really good. But if I move... I will then, because of the way rentals had gone, this was during a rental, during a housing boom. She said to find another place just like this will cost me another, you know, two million. So why yeah. should I move out of this? You know, all I'm paying is the only reason she did it is she said I paid the hundred thousand, finance the hundred thousand, so that I could get the apartment, so I could then pay the what the, was the condo fee which was like $600 a month, which was like $400 a month less than she was paying in rent, okay? And that's why mm -hmm. she did it. She didn't do it because she said, oh, this is going to be worth a million in a year. But a year later, there was this boom, and, and it was worth a million dollars. So you don't hear stories like that in San Francisco, do you? Yeah, not in this podunk town. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You know what the equivalent was in San Francisco. There are certain buildings which, if people look at, uh, oh, Full House would be a good example of it, and they show a row of houses that are called Victorians. And Victorians around the fifties were considered a blight on the on the on the uh, landscape, and they were really cheap. Okay, you could buy, you could get into a, a Victorian for next to nothing. And then all of a sudden, as the years went on, they became quite the place to have. And now how much does a Victorian go for out there, you know? Oh, it'd be millions. Yeah. I mean, incredible amounts of money. And, and here's this thing that just makes me sick. My grandparents owned a Victorian. They didn't pay much for it, but it was a Victorian nonetheless. They moved out of it and moved to Marin County. Uh, and wow. I'm thinking if they just held on to it, right? You want to hear the greatest real estate story of all time? Like, I think we should have enough, <laughs> enough time to tell you this. This is, this is why Alex would have been uh, a spoiled uh, rich kid if my father had just done what he should have done. My father used to go up, and he was a musician, and he used to play at Cal Neva Lodge all the time, which was up in the north shore of, of, uh, of uh, Lake Tahoe. And this was back in the 30s, okay? And he was offered lakeshore property for something like $500 an acre. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he turned it down, saying, who the hell would want to come up here? <laughs> Folks, you know how much I'm, I'm that Lakeshore property is worth today? I mean, not just millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars. He could have bought up, like, you know, 
20 acres. You could have afforded 20 acres, could have financed 20 acres, and I'd be an absolute rich kid right now. Oh, my God, yeah. I wouldn't have to worry about fighting a landlord for rent here. I could just buy the fucking building, you know? <laughs> But that was my father and his wise business judgment, which is just forget it. Yeah, that I think runs in both our family. But the Calneva Lodge was, um, that's where the state line right. crosses through the swimming pool. That's correct. You know the yeah. place. Yes, yes, yes. Once owned by Frank Sinatra for about a week and a half till Sam Giancana came to visit. But that's another story. We've, run, another out, story. we've run out of time. <laughs> With these real estate yeah. battles. I love Larry Bowles Brown. He makes me talk. Thanks, Larry. Please. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> you need to talk. You've got a lot to say. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. See, through the magic of TV, here I here I am, right here. See, I, if I wasn't here, could I do that? Okay, let me see here. Let me uh, let me get their uh, Skype lines open. Uh, they're still working. Uh, apparently, uh, we haven't been uh, uh, killed by the Skype gods, uh, who would like to kill us, uh, because they they don't they don't want us using the kind of Skype we're using right now. But anyway, uh, okay. We're ready to go. So I'm, I'm online anytime you want to call and uh, talk to me. Um, I screwed up a little bit at the beginning of the show tonight. I, I You won't notice it. You didn't notice it. But people who watch the rerun will because we don't have the GabNet logo really at the beginning with the music and everything. It started with the theme. And, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, and that happens when I take a Xanax because it makes me forget how to do shit. I... Isn't that incredible? Oh, boy. Well, anyway. So, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, I, I'm here as usual in my usual depressed state. So uh, give me a call and we will talk to you. Get first in. Uh, Charlie Wallace is, is, is the first guy um, up. Uh, we're waiting for his picture to come through so I can uh, uh, put him on. Uh, come on, come on. Are you there, Charlie? Yeah, you're there, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, you're just you're wiggling around. I can hear you. Yeah, you're going around and around and around and around. Oh, there you are. Okay, now I can, I can put you people up here. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, add uh, to group unknown phone number. It says here, who who is this with the unknown phone number? Hello. Who is it? Whoever it was left. Whoever it was left. So I'm going to remove them. I'm going to remove that person as well. And I will not answer that call again because it simply wastes my time. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you today? Hey, Hi. Good evening. I'm good. How's your, uh, how is, how is your, your individual weekends? Or is it okay? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, do anything interesting, anybody? No, <laughs> and Phil, Phil didn't do anything interesting. No, I worked Saturday and uh, and slept in Sunday. Really, yeah. that's that's it. Somebody, somebody, uh, Forbin Colossus wrote on our uh, on our uh, what do you call it? Our uh, uh, chat room. Uh, um, uh, 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 Alex uh, rarely leaves the apartment. While Marjorie works daily to bring home the bacon, Alex is a character caricature of the chubby wife and her moo moo, consuming bonbons in bed all day. No, I had to write and tell him no. What I do with most of my day is put out fucking fires, technically, so that we can do a show at night. Yeah, but every day there's some kind of technical problem. You know, I, no, I, I I didn't know you wore a moo moo. I thought you wore a bath, <laughs> and, I, and I wear a caftan. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, you're in Harlem. Yeah, I, I wore a ca I wear a caftan. Yeah. What are caftans? With Nehru collar. Yeah, I, I don't know what they were. 
All I know is I think the last guy I ever saw wear a caftan was when I met up with uh, with the Raymond Burr, and yeah. he, he was really gay, and he was yeah. wearing a caftan. Yeah, so and that was the last time I ever saw anybody wearing a caftan. But in case you know what a caftan is, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Looks like a muumuu without the stretching material. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway... Um, um uh no i didn't i didn't do it did i do anything this weekend what did i do nothing hey uh when you were talking to larry earlier yeah. uh you said that you hadn't heard anything uh about the apartment in the suit mm -hmm. i thought last week or so you were going to have another meeting oh oh uh, oh, oh no that was a couple of weeks ago they were supposed to have the mediation it was called off again it's going to be the oh. 27th now is that on the apartment yeah yeah you know i mean the easiest thing that can happen for the uh apartment uh building is you guys live there until you're 95 or 100 <laughs> you die they the other guy says, okay, I'm done. And then they rent the apartment out. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't know. I, Cause it's going to cost everybody less. You know, I'm getting to that point where I could die any day now. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and God knows I have people dropping dead around me left and right or close to it. You know, Jack's back yeah. in the hospital. My wife, ex-wife's got, uh, got cancer, cancer, terminal cancer. So, you know, I, 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 I'm only waiting to see what it is, is gonna, that's going to get me. All right. Oh, I would just so <laughs> like to solve this problem before that happens. I would like to have like a couple of months of just enjoying the place, you know. Uh, but yeah. instead, nah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. I think they're just going to try and wait you out. Well, what do you mean wait us out? Well, in the meantime, they're not getting any rent I, on the place. Yeah, so, but it, it was cheaper for them not to no, take but, but rent see, than it is for them to settle the case or to have to pay but you damages. See, see, we're not suing the landlords. I understand the other guy is. The other guy see, is. The he's, he's suing the landlord and us. So right. we're well, kind of. Oh, but he to, see, the, the, to the guy defend that us you all. Rented from. Yeah. Uh, the guy you uh, sub uh, rented from, yeah, uh, he's got a case against the landlord. I think he's got a good what case the against the landlord. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have any case so, against you. No, he has well, no case he, against us. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I'm them. not saying that because I want to win it. I'm just saying it, there's zero. You know, in yeah. fact, I understand uh, our our lawyers said that their lawyers said that really the person they're going to have to settle with is me eventually. Right, you know, because so the longer they can put it off, the longer it takes to settle. And if everybody dies before they settle, it goes away. But do you realize that this apartment is maybe, okay, not maybe, it is the best apartment in the whole building because yes, of the view, it, because of the view out our window, and because matter. of the size of it. Doesn't and matter. Not broken up. Yeah, you know. What's going, what the value of that apartment is to the landlord is probably $1,500 a month. So why should he settle for a couple hundred thousand dollars when he can just leave you in it for and lose 1500 a month? I, I guess, you know, I mean. It I, just makes more sense for him to leave you in it, let you, you know, skate on the 1500 and nobody pays anybody. Well, it, 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 all I know is it's not our case to win or lose. We got to wait for these two people to stop fighting with each other and, sure. and solve the problem. And then we jump in and take whatever money's there. <laughs> you know, that's really what it's all about. And, yeah. and it, but it, it's just, you know, I'll tell you something. People go, well, it's, it's great. You're not paying any rent on this big, huge apartment. Hey, you haven't for the last, I guess it's maybe, it's it going on seven years maybe? No, I think it's five. Oh, but, no, it's six. I think it's going on six. And I go. Uh, did it start before you were doing the Gabnet thing? Uh, it the, started. Uh, I'll tell you. Podcast? I'll tell you when it started. We moved in. When did we move in here? God, I, I, uh, let me go look. I'll tell you. I think the Gabnet thing's I'll, around five I'll years. I'll tell you because exactly. you lived on Houston before that. No, year. but I'll tell you. That's exactly. what it was, Houston. Yeah. No, but I was, I was, I was, we were living here for almost three years. Uh, let me hold on a second. But you were paying rent. I'm going to go to my mail and let me look at uh, my legal and then let me look at the first thing 
the first date, uh, 2014. Hmm. Okay. okay. That's five years. Yeah. That's five yeah, years. Five years. That was, it was five years. Uh, well, it was four, four years in, uh, well, let me see here. Wait a minute. Five years. But that was in, that was in early 2014. It was in, uh, yeah. it was in uh, March. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so five years ago. Uh, yeah. Then you paid money but, illegally. Well, more than, guy. more than five. Or he yeah, you paid money, money to the other guy for a while, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. And the other guy was oh, legally yeah. taking it because he wasn't supposed to be subletting, right? That's right. his right. That's his claim to fame, you know? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So, you know, actually, you know, what he did was not that uncommon in, uh, in, in uh, Harlem. In New York. In Harlem. Uh, because you know who got bumped? Yeah, you were saying, you got uh, what's his name? Charlie uh, Rangel. A congressman. Rent. What you can't do is you can't rent an apartment and then not live there and then sublet it all the time, okay? And the landlord has to know he, he, that he, you're doing it. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, Charlie Rangel was renting four apartments, and oh, then well, you said that and, your your perspective, your landlord, the, the one you thought you was your landlord. Had been doing it for eight years. Had been doing so it actually, three, actually so prior to us. For, prior to us, he had been doing it for three years. Oh, okay. And you busted so, him. And then somehow you busted him. The, and then no. Well, what happened was the the so landlord that's six years because you paid for three. There was somebody in there for three, so he had his scam going for six years mm -hmm. before he got caught. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, I mean. Uh, Everybody here, it seems like it was a common scam here in Harlem. That's yeah. why I'm saying Charlie Rangel had four apartments that he was doing this with. Okay. Four that you know of. Hey, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that, that's did, a paper how, knew of. Um, how did the landlord for, how did they find out that it was being sublet? Well, they had to know that I was living here because they, because the super helped us move in. In the super right, but, is the on-site de facto representation representative of the landlord. But if they didn't know what your rent was, mm -hmm. and he didn't tell them that he was. Well, oh, they didn't know that. Room. They didn't know that part of it. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't look. I don't know what was going on. All I know is what he did was terribly illegal. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, we, we. We. I'm we, just wondering how he got caught. Look, we, we, he got caught because the landlord eventually sent him a notification saying, "Unless you get the people out of there who are living there, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to throw you out." So then, right. well, that's that's how he, you know, how he got caught. That's how he know? got caught. And I, and I think the reason they did it is they saw that they could probably get this apartment and raise the rent on it and all that. And separate and, and, it into other apartments. Well, yeah, yeah I, because, I think that's what they'd have to do to raise the rent. they have some apartments in this building that uh, through destabilization mm -hmm. are being rented for anywhere from seven to $8,000 a month. And yeah. you don't even have Google. You don't even yeah. have Amazon <laughs> because of uh, AOC. What do you mean I don't have Amazon? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, uh, 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 and what's her name? Cortez. She uh, made it so uncomfortable for Amazon to open up their headquarters in New York. No, she uh, believe was. Believe me, Island. AOC had nothing to do with nothing that. To do. Nothing yeah, to do she, with. Yeah, she she was waving no, her. No, arms no, she was. And... She may have been waving her arms, but she had nothing to do with it. Am I right, Jeff? She well, according to De Blasio yeah. and uh, Como, uh, they think she did. She had nothing to do with it. She had nothing yeah. to do with it. Uh, well, it was true. basically was it was basically people like myself and other members of the community complaining and yeah. making big complaints. What happened was we everybody complained, and then Amazon said, "Well, if you don't want us here, we're leaving." Nobody forced them out. There was no yeah. action taken wow. to force them out. They just decided to to, to leave town. Well, De Blasio has said, "You're a bunch of cowards for giving up so easy." Yeah, and you know. now they're pissed because they didn't want them, but now they're pissed because they thought yeah. better. Well, no, I, I don't. They thought I, they could hold them up. I didn't want them, and I still don't want them. I think that it it it, it to begin with, I think well, you they're got yours. Well, I mean, the, the <laughs> idea is let's spread the wealth around. You know, New York City has enough businesses here as it is already. We don't need Amazon too, but Detroit could use it. Cincinnati could use it. 
a lot of other cities that are not prospering at the present time could use an infusion of that kind of thing. And so the fact that Amazon was just going to put it in New York, big fucking whoop. I mean, how many big major corporations do we have here already? Do we need another one? And they were going to put it on Long Island, and I think no, they weren't going to put no, no, they weren't going to put it on Long Island. They were going to put it in Long Island City. That's Queens, right. yeah. That's oh. Queens. Yeah. yeah. Where's Queens? Wait a minute, Jeff? Jeff? Factory. What? It used to be an old factory. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the building, I don't know what the building was being used at the, at the time. It would but, congest uh, a lot because it's not, a, you know, everything's so tight in New York, you know? Like it's out well, here it's in New Jersey. Well, it's probably like trains like, and transportation and and all kinds of problems. Yeah, well, I mean, but, well, where would, if, let's say you had, what was it, how many jobs was it going to be? I thought it was 25,000. Something like 25,000 jobs. You have 25,000 people every day going into Long Island City, and yeah, where are they going to live? They can't afford to live in New York City on what uh, Amazon's going to pay them. They can't I even afford. I thought the average, uh, the average was, what, 150 grand? No. No, no. I don't think so. yeah, I think that was the deal. No, you know, no, no. The they average they job. said some people would make upwards to one hundred and fifty thousand a year, but that's an executive. Yeah, when you're people, talking about like somebody some working people. in the warehouse, are you kidding me? They're going to pay a minimum wage. That's what they're doing everywhere else. Why should they pay more in New York? Yeah. You know, so so thirty five thousand, forty thousand a year. They're going to live in New York City. I don't think so. No. Yeah. In fact, even if they paid them each one hundred and fifty thousand, they probably couldn't afford to live in New York City. Well, now they can live in Tony's basement. He's living upstairs now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean, uh, all I'm saying is, is that I think that. Uh, uh, and that's a hard place to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So you know, I mean, I, my question is, uh, uh, what. Uh, um, you know, why should they? Why should we have this infusion of people? We don't need it. We did There's not. Too many need people it. in New York as it is. Yeah. Get off my grass! I mean, <laughs> uh, you don't know, but we have a big complex downtown that that Google has. You know, that's enough is, of is a that problem. Is that Hudson something? No, no. That, What's that thing they just built? Well, Hudson? that that that's a Hudson whatever. I can't remember what stores. Or... No, but they built that beautiful structure that's uh, yeah. it's like a work the vessel? of art the vessel that? the vessel yeah oh i saw that it's beautiful right that's yeah. what they call trump yeah. i'm really impressed yeah no i'm i'm it's very impressed i want to go down like to see that. it marjorie went down to see it the other day but Did she, she she couldn't go she couldn't climb up it for two reasons right. number one her knee you know and secondly <laughs> there were so many people waiting to go up that the mm -hmm. line stretched for is a it mile. free, Alex? Or like, like the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, it's free. Huh? It's free. You're kidding me. Something in New York they don't charge to do? That's right. That's crazy. They charge you to get out. No wonder why there's so <laughs> many people I'll, there. I'll tell you what Marjorie got us, though, uh, for uh, April, oddly enough. Uh, tickets to, to Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, you're finally going to see which it, Which is right? the hardest ticket in town to get. But she got she got a... What do they call it? An obstructed seat. But it's not really obstructed. The only thing is there's a musician off to the side and you, you're going to be I near him. I think there was him. a pole in front hey, of Hey, I thing. thought that the Kill the Mockingbird, I read somewhere that there was a number of theaters around the country. They had to close it and uh, refund No, that was, that was th small theater groups who did yeah. the Kill a Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. And there was a there. This isn't the version that's on Broadway. This is not the Aaron Sorkin version. This was a uh, I, somebody wrote the play uh, play version of it, and it's been around for a long time. And uh, the uh, people who are producing it said we have to protect our turf. You know, we have to protect our rights. And so they sent out a cease and desist order to all these uh, small theater wow. groups. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Yes, uh, Charlene. I remember you said you've never read To Kill a Mockingbird. No, I, I, I didn't say I never read it. Movie, I never right? read it, but I never saw the movie either. With but, Gregory Peck, you never saw But it. I finally did. Oh, you did. Okay. And what a fucking disappointment. <laughs> I mean, every, everybody's telling me, oh, this is the greatest movie ever made. You've never, you've never seen To Kill a Mockingbird? So I mm -hmm. went, I watched it, and I said, it's a good movie. Nothing You're wrong not a with it. Gregory Peck fan? 
I'm, and you've no, never I'm seen Glenn Gary, with, Glenn Ross, one I'm, of my favorite I'm, movies. I'm fine with uh, with. Uh, uh, I've, I've seen the first 15 minutes of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. That's as far as I got. Um, they, but anyway, the point is that I was uh, watching. Uh, uh, so I, I watched *To Kill a Mockingbird* after years of everybody, you know, just raising my expectations that this is the greatest movie ever made. And it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's an you know it's a, what a, a 50s, 60s movie, uh, and it's uh, it's mm-hmm. okay, you know. And I like. Well, I it's like, dated now. I think it's dated now, maybe. But yeah. well, you know, it's a sweet it it it's a sweet film with a nice message and things like that. But you know, I can think of better films from that time. For instance, I I think um, uh, if you want to talk about great movies from the 50s, uh, like I would. Rather watch a face in the crowd, and what it has, oh, yeah. what it has to say, than to kill a mockingbird. You know. Well, who's in that? Who directed that? Well, that starred. Uh, when I tell you it starred, you're going to go, "Oh my God, really?" Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Griffith. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he was I very write good. That down again. He was I'm incredible. He was yeah. incredible. Yeah. And yeah. uh, it's ten that zillion years. If you go see uh, a face in the crowd, folks, you just wonder how he ever went from that to Andy right. and Mayberry. Yeah, exactly. You know, character. because he plays the biggest fucking asshole ever. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. meanest son of a bitch. And it was, I think, it was uh, Walter Matthau's first movie. Wow. Uh, or one of them. That, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Patricia Neal is in it. It's a great film. Great film. I mean, if I want to tell people, you want to go see a cautionary tale, you want to go see a film with a message, A Face in the Crowd is the film. And it's as applicable today. So why isn't it something that I've never seen? Like, it's not a a Turner Classic movie. Oh, sure it is. Sure it it is. is. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep an eye on it. It's very good. Yeah, and and it's uh, it's a cautionary tale. which Black and white or color? Black and white. Which, it's which, away. it's such a cautionary tale that it applies to today. I mean, it's about a guy who it really stands up, who uses the media and becomes a uh, a, a major uh, force in politics and everything else, and it, it starts to run away with him. You know, he was had a well, mean streak. Like Trump. No, it no, sounds it's like that, Nunez. You know, Nunez. what's happening is. Uh, uh, the uh, guy from California uh, who was on the Judiciary Committee. Yeah, the prick. Well, that's that's what he was made out to be by the media. Yes. But he's suing Twitter right now. I know. I have it and, and And every two weeks he's going to sue another group. Uh, you know why? Has, you know why? Because well, Nunez is the asshole they say he is. Well, we'll see. You know, uh, he, to begin he, with, he cannot win that suit. Well, if they, there is it no depends way. He on is, how they de- no, determine he's making, they're going to defend themselves. He's making a statement uh, by suing, but he cannot win. And the reason is that the further up you are in, in the public eye, uh, the less you can uh, take action against people for things they say. For As an example, I could well, say his, right, his now, right now that I heard that Donald yeah. Trump when he was 25 years old, raped a baby. Yeah. Okay. And Donald Trump can't grabbed her by the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump can't can't sue me. But on the other hand, he could say that I'm a pederast, and I can't sue him. Okay. Well, the, uh, yeah. And that's, and so the lower on the pecking order, a little easier it is for you to do it. But Nunez is a senator has a very difficult time of suing anybody he, he for claims, anything. Yeah, but he claims that he received threats and that there were bots or or uh, these fake accounts that were creating all of these threats and that uh, they shadowed, yeah, Here's what he said. Let me... Let me shadowed uh, something uh, him? Uh, 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 Devin Nunez, uh, rec- representing Sal- San Joaquin Valley and Tulare in Fresno is alleging that Twitter and the anonymous creators of the parody accounts, get the word parody, which, by the way, is protected by the Constitution. One of them was Nunez's mother. It's called Devin Nunez's mom and Devin Nunez's cow are guilty of defaming him. 
Right. Uh, the complaint Nunes filed this week uh, seeks at least $250 million in damages. Media Post quotes the complaint is stating that Twitter allowed and allows its platform to serve as a portal of defamation in order to undermine public confidence in plaintiff and to benefit his opponents and opponents of the Republican Party. That's bullshit. He would never win that in a, and he probably won't even get that past the exploratory stages. You know, he's wasting his time, well, it, but he's doing it because he if, just if wants, they, he, he wants to complain. Well, if they claim they're a news outlet, then they, no, no, they can have a they're defense. Not, no, they're not. But if they claim they're a private company. They're claiming they're a parody site. Yes. And parody is, protect by the, is protected by the Constitution. Yeah. And the guy who made that happen was my friend Al Goldstein, who in a case years ago where he had the Pillsbury Doughboy fucking the Pillsbury <laughs> Dough Girl in an oven with the inscription, nothing says lovin' like something from the oven, uh, that case was thrown out because of parody. And the guy who actually made parody allowable was Larry Flint, who took it all the way to the Supreme yep. Court because Jerry Falwell sued him for saying he, yep. you know, it was one of these ads, you remember, uh, I, like a doer's ad or whatever, and uh, he, uh, it was, uh, 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 what's that noise? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 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 he remembers, oh. his, uh, Jerry Falwell remembers his first time, and then it was all about him fucking his mother. <laughs> and this went to the Supreme Court, and Larry prevailed. He hmm. made it. He made it law that parody is protected by the Constitution. Because it's a parody, so nobody's going to And so, it in this particular case, they describe these two sites as parody accounts. Okay. He had a feud with him, right, Jerry Falwell? Oh, Didn't he? I saw, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that movie. But yeah. he, but but Larry won, and yeah. uh, he prevailed in that uh, that particular case. Good and for him, freedom of speech, right? Yeah, like. and he allowed that that allowed me and anybody else who does parody to do what we want to do without yeah, fear Alec of Walter getting sued. Be able to do Trump, right? The <laughs> well, I mean, he's a, he's a public figure, and he is president of the United States. But you know, if you want to do a parody of of, of somebody. Uh, Remember uh, it, that guy who did all those parody songs, Ray Stevens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of his albums. Yeah, yeah but those weren't parodies. Those weren't parodies? I no, thought they were taking songs. Those weren't parodies, no. Oh. Ray Stevens wrote songs that were funny. Yeah. Yeah. He did not that write was, uh, parodies. The other guy, Weird Al, you don't think Weird Al were... writes parodies. But Weird, Al Re yeah. Weird Al Yankovic writes parodies. There is, however, a limit to parodies. You have to go out and get, if you're doing a song, you have to go out right. and get the permission of the person you're par the song you're parroting from the composer to use it because obviously you're going to change the words to his melody. Yeah, you're going to keep. And the so melody. you have to get his permission. And so therefore, I mean, I know that because I turned out an album years ago with uh, Pat Sky called "Songs That Made America Famous," and we did "Okie from Muskogee," um, uh, "Okie from Muskogee." Um, and we, it was called, we called it, uh, I'm a, I'm a something from something. I can't remember what it was called now. Um, and we used almost the same, we used the same melody and, um, um, they wouldn't let it. Oh no, I know what it was. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Was it, was it, was it, uh, what's his name? We did Okie from Muskogee or was it the other song we did, which was a takeoff on Mr. Bojangles. I think it was the one, was it either one. What, 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 what we did is we changed the melody to a folk song that sounded just like it, uh, you know, with a few note changes. But you have to get the permission of the person you're doing the parody. It was Mr. Bojangles, um, Jerry, Jeff, Dylan? Jerry Jeff Walker. Oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Sammy Dylan did it. Sammy covered it, right? Well, yeah, ours, yeah. ours was called, uh, uh, no, I think, it was, I think it was the Okie from Muskogee. We, yeah, the Okie from Muskogee, we had to change the melody to a, there was a song in folk music called Something Bird, uh, and uh, we use that as the melody, and you can't really tell it isn't okay from a uh, But uh, no, we and did, we, yeah, it, because we did a thing on Bo, to Bojangles, which was called, um, 
uh, Mr. Abramovitz. I knew a man named Abramovitz. He made for you worn out <laughs> shoes, dirty pants. That cheap old Jew, that was the song. So, so was, there, there, was, there was a bunch of old Jewish guys that had a, uh, a comedy album. Um, uh, I can't remember their names. Uh, they it's had some every, every comedy album is a Jewish comedy album. Come on. <laughs> Well, me? This played off the fact that they were old Jewish guys. Hmm. But anyway, that's... Uh, I, by the way, I'm letting you on, um, Doug. Doug. I recognize him, too. I, I appreciate it. And actually, when I called up, you started talking about Mr. Bojangles. I forgot what I was calling up about. So I am just going to keep quiet and try to remember what I was originally calling you about. So... If that's okay with you, sure. If you cut me off. That's fine. If you're no not hard well, if you're too drunk tonight, I'll I'll hang up on you. Anyway, um, uh, but all I'm saying is Nunez is going to have a very hard time suing. I mean, he's yeah. just blown smoke out his own ass, uh, and uh, uh, he's a prick. You know, he he has a reputation. As, listen, he's one of these guys that's not even liked by fellow congressmen who are Republicans. They can't stand him. Well, yeah. yeah, they they did turn on him, uh, but you know the media no, did a good didn't. job of blasting him. And well, I mean, he went off when he shouldn't have. He was in a, he was uh, the head of a committee, and he ran right. off to tell Trump privately what was going on in the committee, and that's considered a no no. Well, sp supposedly he said that there was no proof uh, that uh, or that they didn't find anything that. Trump had done well, no, but he wrong. wasn't supposed to tell him. Yeah, that. but they didn't interview anybody. He was, they were, they weren't supposed to tell him that. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. um, he, he wasn't supposed to. Be. So anyway, Nunez is a fucking asshole. But anyway, he uh, he is suing them, and uh, his uh, his complaint lists several examples of tweets he finds objectionable. One by Devin Nunez's mom reads, "At Duva, D Devin Nunez." Your district is looking for you. Are you trying to obstruct the federal investigation again? You come home right this instant, and no more mine or no more Minecraft. I guess it's his mother supposedly speaking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, you can say stuff like that. He's perfectly. He's rife for any comment like that. Otherwise, he could sue me for saying Devin Nunes is an asshole. Uh, expect to be served. <laughs> Probably expect to be served. Exactly. So you know, uh, that's that's that's. You know, I right. thought he was going to go after Facebook next, but maybe Gabnet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I could I could stand it. You know, I, I need the publicity. Publicity. You got yeah. Mister Turtle. <laughs> and I got Mister Turtle. Alex, you you would prevail too. So. Yeah. It's so, how much justice can you afford? How much justice can I afford? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I had the echo on, say by accident. Oh, oh. very nice. <laughs> what? You know something? I got to get rid of echo in this room. That's Alexa. Uh, 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 Alexa. What did she say? Alexa. Uh, I, see, she doesn't respond to Alexa because I changed it from echo to uh, from Alexa to echo. I have to mm -hmm. whisper that. Because uh, Echo, call President Trump. No, I've got my earphones on. They can't <laughs> if she can't hear it. But anyway, um, so, because my name is Alex, so yeah. I was oh, afraid yeah. that every time somebody said Alex, she would chime in. But every now and then, she, like she's got like Alzheimer's <laughs> or something, she just starts babbling she just incoherently, <laughs> and, and I I can't figure out why. You know, so, I love that. You know. Uh, but uh, so anyway, listen. You know, we talk about we talk about um, um, all these mergers and stuff that have been happening lately, and I, I think they're all kind of sad. I mean, for instance, uh, um, AT and T has bought up Warner's Time. I guess Time. What was Time Warner basically? It's uh, like that Spectrum, I believe. No. You're absolutely you're absolutely wrong. That's the cable company. We're not talking about the cable company. Did what did I say? I said Time Warner. Time yeah. Warner owns Warner Films, Warner Books, uh, several record labels, uh, and whatever. 
Um, but what they're doing in the process, they're going to fire like 20,000 people. Wow. Always. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's a new Fox network, so uh, maybe there's a place for them to go. Uh, what's his name who was the... Um, what does the new Fox uh, network have to do with this, Phil? I'm not oh, talking about that. Well, you said, you know, they're going to fire a bunch of people. Uh, uh, Murdoch. Well, they also, they're also going to own CNN. They're going to own HBO. Uh, they're going to own Cinemax. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, uh, uh, what is it that Disney isn't, oh, that's AT&T that's bought mm -hmm. that up. Disney has bought up most of Fox, except for Fox News, but they bought FX and they bought the movie company and, uh, they bought the, I think the TV production arm, uh, and Murdoch is keeping the news company uh, under a, um, um, let's see, it has a new name, I think. Right. Uh, a standalone entity, Fox Corp, it's called. Uh, they and just they just hired two uh, interesting people. Yes. Uh, Donna, well, 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 can and... I tell the story? Oh, sure. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, who, uh, the, Donna Brazil has gotten a job over there because she was fired from CNN because it turned out that she gave Hillary Clinton the questions that were going to be asked in the debate, and they felt that that was wrong, and it was. Yeah. It was definitely wrong. So where do you go if nobody else wants you? You go to Fox. Uh, and so she's gone over to Fox, but that's not what I was talking about. I was talking I about the Wisconsin. fact they've started Fox Corp., and uh, they began trading today and announced new members of their board of directors. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, it's uh, uh, Paul. Uh, there you go, uh, ruining my story again. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it's Paul. I, I only said the first name. It's Paul Ryan is yeah. on the board of directors of the new Fox Corp. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, he needed a job. Well, no, he didn't need a job. He could have run again and still had one, but he decided not to because he probably knew he could go to some place like Fox Corp and make a hell of a lot more money. Yeah, he's probably making millions. Like Jason Shadows there. Other new directors include Ann Dias, Chase Carey, Ronald A. Hernandez. The previously announced board members include Rupert Murdoch, Lachlan Mur Murdoch, who will run Fox Corp, and Jacqueline Nasser, Jacques Nasser, rather. Uh, Kerry, CEO, CEO of Formula One Racing Circuit, is a longtime Murdoch associate who held a senior level executive post at News Corp. See, it's Fox Corp now instead of News Corp. So, anyway, that's uh, that. Uh, so we have all these we we have these mergers happening with uh, 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 media companies, and you're probably wondering why. Well, to begin with, Disney is going to take all of this and fold it into their new Disney channel, their Disney whatever they're going to call it. Uh, and so what they'll have is all the shows from Fox they can put on there. They will have all the movies from 20th Century Fox that they can put on there. Uh, I mean, they, they've got all the Marvel films, all the Disney films, all the Pixar films. I mean, think of what they own now. Mickey Mouse can do the news. I mean, this has really become, dare I say it, a monopoly. Uh, and You're right. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, Charlene. You know, I watch. Um, I wanted to say Regis, not Regis. The, uh, what's her name again? The skinny one, Kelly Ripa, and the other guy from Brian American Brian Sequest. Sequest. Yeah, it's a vapid show. But they're always talking about, like on ABC, how they're owned by Disney all the time. And then I heard on the news or something, Chris Christie works for them, ABC. Well, like he works there. Well, something. well, uh, Disney um, uh, has uh, it, it has acquired, as they say, 20th Century Fox. They own mm -hmm. that whole Penelope, Penelope, Panoply. Is that the word I'm looking for? Pa uh, yeah, Panoply. Yeah, Nuclear. Of, 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 of. Thanks. Of, of outfits uh, and uh, the reason they're buying these things up is so that they can use them in their in their various uh, and sundry uh, things and, and in the case of uh, AT&T they're buying it up 
uh, they're buying up uh, uh, what is HBO, uh, Warner's, and all of that, what? so they can have all that material. A megalopoly. They, all something. they're doing is they're all saying, "Hey, let's be the next next net Netflix," but they can't be because they're the old AT and T. You know, yeah, the baby the bells. old Disney. I had a stock job, and we used to call it the baby bells to you know, so people older would understand you know where it came from. ATT, you know. Well, you try to see how much you can buy here, and and what they what they're buying is they're buying n not the company so much as the uh, the the intellectual property of those. Now, companies. wasn't Sony buying up a bunch of that no, stuff? For, no, no, Sony yeah. can't afford to buy shit anymore. Yeah. Hey, can I say something good about Disney, Glenn? What? Well. You Recently, you had that guy in New York who was like making a big deal. He got kicked out of a bar because he had like a mega hat on. And if you, if you do some research on that guy, you see this. You know, this guy's an instigator. He's just a pain in the ass. He's like the guy that. Well, what's what's that, the like, point you're making? What, make your point. Make your point. Uh, the the point is Disney told this guy you can't because he pulled that stunt one time before. They told him you can't do that anymore. And then you try to do it again, it's like you're banned. So, banned from what? Coming to Disney anymore and you know being obnoxious and asshole. Oh, was he wearing the hat in the in the uh, park? No, he was flashing a banner and like waving, you know, flashing a banner. This was the same guy that went like when the end of the product, uh, the performance of Frozen, when they're all taking a bow and he like ran up to the front and, like. Flash is like big banner saying Trump 2020, and oh, so, you know a performer you know, grabs it out of his hand and yeah. he's like acting like all snowflake. Like, so, how dare you do that for me? I'm so, are you saying you. it's a bad thing they threw him out? No, I say it's a great thing. Actually, I got like on a little Facebook uh, battle with this guy. Good for you. The guy's a retard. So anyway, yeah. So had nothing to do that. Well, day. Must have been a battle of the wits going on there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be in. I wouldn't want to be in on myself, on right? that that pissing You're match not... because most of the pissing is taking place in your pants. Anyway, they, they probably they probably did it on your Facebook page. Probably, <laughs> probably, probably so. Anyway, um. um so uh, let me see here. What else is what else is happening? Oh yeah, Fox hired. Uh, oh oh oh. oh. Who, it, who's it, that executive that was having an affair at, at uh, was it wasn't CBS? Uh, that is a Japanese guy. Has what? a Japanese name? Tak Takahashi or something? A big big executive in one of the media companies. Uh, no, I he, thought he, it was. CBS. Oh, I, I think it was. Uh, he was at. Uh, was he at? Was he at? Uh, I think it was at Warner's, and they dumped him. Yeah, the, yeah, he the, had to step down. But that has uh, to do. That has to do with uh, AT and T. Dumping. Yeah, well, yeah. wasn't he, the claim was that he was having an affair with a woman, and she got parts uh, because of uh, the fa the favors that he claims it's consensual. Also, being married, uh, he stepped down. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who the name of that person is. I had yeah, it was like somewhere. Takahashi or something. To... I, 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 I'm trying to remember who he who he who he is. But anyway, but uh, it's another you know purging. guy at the top. It's it's all part of the purging that's going on there. I mean, they're they're firing. Um, who did they? What did they say? What company was it that they that they bought? I think they said that Fox. Fox, they, they figure in the next year, Fox will only release five movies. Because, well, because Disney doesn't care whether Fox produces movies or not anymore. You know, they're just going to let them produce enough movies so the name is out there. So you can say... Oh, this, the 20th Century Fox. Yeah, this, this, this company, which, God, I mean, I've known the 20th Century Fox logo ever since I was a kid, ever since I was mm -hmm. born. It was here before I was born. Mm -hmm. Um that it's it's pretty much a has been you know and that if, if, if disney has no desire i mean i don't know who knows what they're going to do with fx who knows you know fx is a terrific channel doing some terrific mm. work but are they going to keep hands off or are they going to change all the players at that mm. network 
it, it's not, uh, the whole thing is not pleasant. And I, I just think allowing all these companies to merge and to combine is bad. It's a very bad thing. And we... It's a megalopoly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. Uh, and so you, you're going to wind up having most media owned by like three companies. That's yeah. the, the way it's going. It's Warner Brothers. Yeah. What? Warner Brothers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tu, that's what Tushihara. I, that's what I said. It was yeah. over at Warner Brothers. He was, he was, uh, who, who's Charlotte Kirk? That's uh, the gal she, he had an affair with. She's in. I have no idea. Oh. I have no idea. Well, let's talk about something here that I'm sure Phil will not want to talk about. And that's the fact that your president, <laughs> over the weekend, what notes? issued yes. 50, count them, 50 Unbelievable. tweets. Yeah. Now, if I knew that the if I didn't know the guy was a drinker, I'd think he was drunk. All right, but there's drunk it, but it may not be that he's drunk, but it could be the man is just losing his fucking mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, George uh, uh, Conway says that. He, well, he went after right. George Conway, but then again, George Conway has gone after him, and he can't keep his mouth shut when anybody goes after him. You know. Uh, hey, you can't see me, but I got my hand raised. So whenever you want to call me, I want to tell you a story about Trump. What I heard, I don't know if it's true or not. Well, I mean, what what is it? Let's get it out of the way now, so we don't have to waste. Okay, time. I, I live I live in Wilmington for a while there. They were doing like a lot of movies in Wilmington, and I just ran into this guy who said that he knew him and didn't know him very well, but he filmed like The Apprentice. And he just had an encounter where he was like in the elevator with him. And he asked him what his favorite film was. I can't remember. I think it's Philadelphia, but I can't say for sure. And and the guy says, like, oh, I'm surprised you, you know, like that film and all that. And he was like, well, I'm surprised that the actor, you know, uh, that was in that movie played a fact. Are you going to get to the, right. are you going to get to the gist of the story here? <laughs> I was just telling you that. Well, yeah, no, you're was, going on Trump forever. That, yeah, this actor was a fag, and uh, I'm playing a fag, and you know, he, he'd get like all sorts of ladies and all that. Why was he playing that part? So what? I don't even know what you're talking about, Doug. Doug, uh, you, you may want to quit while you're ahead. I, what, what? What the fuck are you talking about? Let me say it again. No, God, I don't I want you to say it again because it made no sense the first time. It does if you use the reverb. Wait a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oops. Wait a minute. Did I lose everybody? Wait a minute. Let me see here. Are you all there? I lost you all. Oh, boy. What did I do? I pushed something and everything went south. Okay. Okay. All right, well, I will just have to um, call everybody back, I guess. I don't know. They're going to have to call me. Uh, I don't know what happened. I pushed something, and, um, well, I know what I can do. Let me see here. I bet I can call them. I, what, what I, happened? I can, there we go. Okay. Alex is back. Okay, there, there we go. I just figured out how to get you back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, we, we, we were. We, I think. We I think. I think we lost Doug. I think we lost one. Doug. Yeah, uh, we were thinking that Doug killed you off. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, I I that was, it, that that was me. I pushed a button here, that. but I found a way to get you back. I simply went to the group, and there you were. You were all still mm. talking to each other, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, okay. I thought that was it, Alex. That you were going to say that's it, no more, and I'm off. That's it. Well, <laughs> I, I, I figured it was a good way to get rid of. Uh, Good way to get rid of, um, you know, him. Yeah, he had. Um, I think he'd sound he like drunk. he, sound he drunk. was uh, having a few. Yeah, he sound. Uh, yeah, don't call us drunk anymore, huh? Okay. Yeah, because uh, he's a, he's a nice guy and he's actually very intelligent. Uh, I, I don't. Sober. I don't think he's a nice guy because he makes my life a living hell. Okay, you know. So he, if he had more respect for me, I I'd say fine. But I, you know. 
anyway, let me get back to the let me get back to these tweets before we were so rudely interrupted mm. by a talk of Trump calling somebody a fag. I don't know what that story was about. Well, he was really drunk. But yeah. I think the movie Philadelphia had something to do with uh, lawyers representing gay people or something to that effect. Yeah, it was about oh, age. He was to... It was about age, yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's what he was trying to say because I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. Either. Well, he was trying to make a connection between AIDS and Trump. I think. Yeah. Anyway, oh. uh, uh, let's get to these. Let's look at these tweets here. Uh, oh yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Must stay strong and fight back with vigor. Stop working so hard on being politically correct, which will only bring you down and continue to fight for our country. The losers all want you uh, want what you have. Don't give it to them. Be strong and prosper. Be weak and die. Stay true. What's he doing? Talking to himself? Yes, right. It, it, it could be one of those um, uh, parody sites. No, 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 no. This He's is, a blithering idiot. This is all from the real Donald Trump. Uh, were Fox it, News it, weekend it's, it's anchors the real Donald Trump, Alfel Mom. Neville and Leland Vitter trained by CNN prior to their ratings collapse? In any event, they uh, that's where they should be working along with their lowest rated anchor, Shepard Smith. Lowest rated anchor? I thought he was one of their biggest rated anchors. Uh, by the way, left. by the way, you know who suddenly disappeared from CNN this weekend? No. And looks like she she's gone. Janine Pirro. Uh, oh, a two week suspension. Some outrageous things. Uh, uh, I, uh, I would be right back. Wait a minute. It isn't a two week suspension, Phil, because uh, they Fox would not say why she wasn't there. She was yeah. insulting some no. Muslim person. She, they and she apparently it a, was taken out of context, but hajib or something she said, yeah. and it's actually pronounced like hajab or something. So what? Uh, hajab. And and uh, the blonde one from New Jersey, what's her name again? The annoying one. She said some outrageous things too over the weekend. What's, what's her name again? That what is her? Yeah. Oh, her and her husband. You have to oh, go take you're care. You're the blonde one from New Jersey. Well, <laughs> I know. Yeah, but no, I'm not like her though. She yeah. is politically horrible. Mm. I mean, um, I can't remember her name. And what is her position with Trump? They keep her out of the. You, so line. you're going to go do something, Phil, and not listen to the rest of these and defend them? No, I heard my dog, dog yapping. Was oh, it was your dog. dog yeah, mm -hmm. it was my dog barking. So I just wanted to check and see why. Uh, right back. Oh, here we go. It, it, oh, this is a, a part of his obsession with late night comedy. Oh, there goes Phil. Yeah, he's bullied again. And he's talking about an SNL from, it was a It's rerun. truly incredible that shows like Saturday Night Live, not funny, no talent. You know, he always has to do that, you know. Lousy ratings, no talent. He called uh, Kellyanne <clears throat> Conway's husband. Oh, That's no, it. he Kelly called Joe Conway. Biden a man of little in intelligence. Oh, God. You're going to talk about, I don't, I'm sorry, Alex, but he insulted John McCain again. Well, wait a minute. Well, I don't, don't, don't jump ahead of me on this. Sorry. So. It, it's truly that's Phil's job. Uh, it's right, truly incredible that shows like uh, not not funny. Blah, 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 can spend all of the time knocking the same person me over and over without so much of a mention of the other side. W what is the other side? One side that they side on is what's funny, and you're hilarious. Okay, mm. like an advertisement without consequences. Same with late night shows. This is a these are ramblings. These aren't these aren't coherent statements. Um, should Federal Election Commission and or FCC look into this? There must be collusion with the Democrats and of course Russia. The one sided media coverage, most of it fake news. Hard to believe I won and am winning. Approval rating fifty two percent, ninety three percent with Republicans. Sorry, MAGA. Um, the Democrats have done have done in trying to steal a presidential election. First at the ballot box, <laughs> well, that's where you win them, isn't it? Yeah. And and after that failed with an insurance policy, the biggest scandal in the history of our country. Boy, he is he is just absolutely uh, incoherent. I mean, there was something like 89 tweets or something. I no, it was 50. Right. It was 50, they say. 50, okay. 
Uh, okay, spreading the fake and totally discredited dossier is unfortunately a very dark stain against John McCain. Ken Starr, yeah, former so. independent counsel, uh, he had far worse stains than this, including thumbs down on repeal and replace after years of campaigning to repeal and replace. Then there's another one on John McCain. So it is indeed, just proven in court papers, last in his class, Annapolis, John McCain, uh. that sent the fake dossier to the FBI and media, hoping to have it printed before the election. He and the Dems working together failed as usual. Even the fake news refused this garbage. To begin with, he was fifth in, uh, to the last. Yes, he was fifth to the last, and also he's wrong. Uh, McCain... Uh, did not release the dossier, and he didn't release it to the um, to the media. He released it to the FBI, yeah. and, uh, the FBI and, and he did it post election, yeah, not election. not during the election. So your president is just lying through his fucking teeth. But uh, they're saying that the reason they were able to get the FISA warrants, and that's what Nunez was working on, uh, was due to this dossier. So it was probably around prior to the election because they got the FISA warrants prior to the election. Yeah, but the, but all I'm saying is the dossier wasn't even released till after the election. To the public. It wasn't released to the FBI either. Well, then how did they get the FISA warrants if it wasn't released I prior have no to the idea, election? but it wasn't it wasn't released prior to the election. Well, they are saying that the probable cause for the fire, FISA warrant Phil, was the dossier. Phil, I saw the proof on television. They, they had a timeline, and there was no—he's wrong. It, he couldn't have possibly done it prior to the election. Well, I, then I don't know how they got the FISA warrants if they were based I don't, on What the FISA dossier. warrants? The FISA is a warrants on what? Uh, to to wire-trap uh, Trump in, in Trump Tower. No, that was that was a completely different deal altogether, and they were wiretapping him, not because they were trying to find out what Trump was doing, but to find out if somebody was doing something that would uh, jeopardize him. I understand, but yes. because they, yes, but that they had nothing other information. that had nothing to do with the dossier. Uh, Phil, it had nothing to do with the dossier, and the dossier claim, was not handed over. The debt, no. Oh, Phil, don't try to You don't discredit. want fake news. How about fabricated? It, 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 the, 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 uh, Much better. <laughs> the dossier was turned over to the F FBI post-election. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, then he goes, make America great again. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly the most rational tweet he's had. Uh, spreading the fake totally discredited dossier is unfortunately a very dark stain against McCain. Oh, I just read that one. Those were some of the uh, some of the meanderings, the ramblings, the craziness that was Donald J. Trump. Yes, uh, uh, Charlene. Like when I heard he uh, disparaged McCain somehow or something again, I had to find out what he tweeted about because I was like, "Here we go again." He, I mean, the man passed away for God's sake, and he's still, you know, like beating a dead horse about that. Like, can he leave somebody alone that's like resting in peace now? You know. Well, why don't we ask we that? Awful. Strawberries. Why don't we ask that of Phil? I mean, don't you find it a little uncomfortable that your president was just uh, ra railing against a dead guy who was, well, by the way, a beloved dead guy? Yeah. He was. He's beloved now that he's dead. <laughs> there isn't. There isn't a republic. A, a live Republican that the Democrats ever be loved. Uh, uh, they liked yeah. John McCain. Yeah. I was one of those that, that went, in spite of the fact that he's a Republican, and I don't agree with everything he said, I found that, I always said that McCain was a very principled man. I agree. And, and so how can you feel comfortable Ooh. with your president, the man you like, disparaging John McCain like that? He's dead, forget it. He, he he's obsessed with John McCain. Well, I, I guess he feels that he was wronged yes, by John McCain. But he but what, and and he put him down enough while he was being wronged. Okay, he's dead, Phil. Leave he's him alone. Yeah. Nobody said that you know Trump has a lot of class. Uh, you know, and I don't like the things that he does on Twitter. 
I like the things that he does. Uh, you know, for for the country, like what? Not what all, he says. all the lies he it makes, like the things he says he's going to do that he doesn't do. But he's done more uh, of the things that he said he would do than not any other. Really, not really. He said, for instance, years. that he wasn't going to touch Medicare or Medicaid, and look what he's huh? doing. Look what he's I doing. I don't. That could just be a bargaining chip. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way. But that isn't a look, bargaining chip. If you look chip, at the way he said he would never, he would never. He would never I understand. go after. But if you look at the way he bargains, whether it's with North Korea uh -huh. or how's that else, going for him? Hmm? How's that going well, for him? It, it, it's it's a beginning, but you know, <laughs> no, no, no. It's all, Phil, 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 bargains, Phil. It's he all, does this. all it's that's all, his tactic. Phil, Phil. It's all over with North that's Korea. His, no, it isn't. But that's his tactic. What his tactic uh -huh. is, is 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 to is to this, push it, because out. he's using the same tactics he used as a businessman. Yeah, it looks yeah. that way. Then that means we're going to go bankrupt. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> right, right. He was Maybe he's gone bankrupt right. enough to he you know this to go time. Bankrupt. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now we're morally bankrupt with this well, government. You know, we're yeah. having good GDP. He's doing a good. He's doing a good job. And you yeah. know what? Thirty-four uh, uh, percent of Latinos give him a positive uh, approval rating. Mm -hmm. Well, those are stupid Latinos. Yes, Jeff. Thirty-four uh, percent. Yeah, that's I, uh, that, I that's not a lot, Phil. It's only thirty-four fucking percent. It's not a majority. It doesn't have to be to put him over the top. I happened to go see my accountant this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. How much are you going to owe? <laughs> Seventy percent increase compared to the previous year, which wow. I'm basically the same retirement world that I live in, and the same amount of investments that have we had. Something. Mr. Trump is not helping. I'm not becoming the millionaire that uh, my account. Well, that he, he's only doing what you guys want. He's redistributing the wealth. He's taking it from you guys and yeah. he's giving it to the Republicans. <laughs> the fact is, Phil, that 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 tax that's true. That tax plan has fucked over a lot of average Americans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yes, uh, uh, Charlene. When uh, Jeff started talking about his accountant and everything, mm -hmm. I took my taxes over, my forms and everything, like to drop off with the information. Mm -hmm. And when I started talking politics, he was laughing. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to see what's going to happen because I'm not finished yet. To see, I, I, I'm really extension. scared I'm not getting anything back. Because I've heard from people that, you know, they made out a little bit last year, but that's what they said was going to happen. And, you know, you know, I asked him if that was going to happen and he didn't, you know, he didn't say, but I'm just waiting until it's done because I'm hoping that I'm wrong because I could use some money back, you know. Well, chances yep. are you're not going to get money back. Chances are you're going to wind up paying. And here's the here's That's the, what here, I think, here's yeah. the problem. Uh, the, the, the problem is, is that a lot of things that you were able to take off before you can't take off yeah. now. That's right. And and uh, the 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 tax breaks that he gave aren't tax breaks that will then affect the bottom line of what you have to pay. You know, the only thing where Marjorie and I are benefited by is that it went from whatever the... 30-something uh, percent. Uh, whatever, no, whatever the, uh, the uh, 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 what do you call it, the minimum wage for uh, uh, on taxes or taxable income with us went up to now it's $26,000. That may save us some money. But most people, he says most of his clients, people who, who have stocks, and they, a lot of stuff, okay, uh, uh, he said are going to be really hurt this year. And he said it's so I much, he said it's, the, he said it's so much more complicated now. I thought they lowered the uh, percentage on, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the type of tax you yeah, get Phil, on stocks. Phil, they, they did that, they did that, but they also took away a lot of deductions. It took yeah. away a lot of stuff you could yes. take off yeah. that you can't asking, take off yeah. now. I was like, can my husband take off the welding rods? Can you take off my mileage because I'm a 1099 vendor? And, you know. Uh, Charlene, know uh, Trump was just keeping his promise. And uh, mm -hmm. he said, your husband's Mexican, right? Yeah. 
and he said the Mexicans would pay for the wall. Oh, he is paying. <laughs> <laughs> funny joke there, Phil. All right. I yeah. got to give you that uh -huh. one. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, paying you know. Paying nose for that wall, right? <laughs> it, it's not going to be. So a I think when you do your taxes, you're going to be very disappointed. I think. Uh, I, I think. Uh, well, well, what I could. I just an extension. Yeah, what could lose him the election is if enough people feel this crunch from the tax thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could One really year he's down his popularity. Huh? Like I heard it's tweeting. up. You know, he was like in the 46s or something. Now, I think I heard like 50 something. George Stephanopoulos said it today. Oh, uh, wait till we invade Iran. No, no you, go you, even lower. You, yeah. you said it went up, Charlene? His, I said his, it went up. his unpopular, yeah. His unpopular just, rating, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. He's rep he's ninety six percent popular with Republicans. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not everybody's a Republican, Phil. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just that those are the ones that vote. Wait, well, many more people are Democrats, and then there are the independents that that are going to be the determining factor because most Democrats, we know how they're going to vote. They're going to vote for whoever the nominee is of the Democratic Party. Yeah, if if they uh, get out of their house that day, uh, it, Phil. You, Believe, Trump's giving us incentive. We, yeah, to get Trump out of is house. giving us incentive to get out. L look at what happened in Texas. You know, Beto O'Rourke did not win that election, but he came closer to winning that oh, election oh, oh. than anybody has in years. It's, the only person that's less popular than Hillary Clinton is Ted Cruz. Now, <laughs> you know, come on. You know, I, I, if, if he couldn't beat Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is the guy you love to hate. No, no, no. But you're talking Not about in a, Texas. It, 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 he's, yeah, tell him about Texas, Charlie. Yeah, well, no, Ted I'm, Cruz. I'm, I'm, wait, wait a minute. Texas Shut up, Phil. Well, tell him about Texas. Explain Texas to him because I live I, there. I can't too. explain it, but they, they do. People in Texas love Ted Cruz. I couldn't believe it. They love George Bush. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are the Texans. Uh, you know, slowly Change that people. state is going to turn. Slowly that, as as more and more uh, 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 people migrate to Texas, non-whites migrate to Texas, and you know, there's a lot of Californians can't afford to live in California, can't find yeah. employment in yeah. Texas, is wooing a lot of Californians. So, That's and why let's face it, Beto O'Rourke came pretty close to winning, but more than anybody would expect a Democrat what's, to what's do. What's this? What's this? That's what Charlie? Trump says Beto O'Rourke does. He doesn't do that. He talks <laughs> with, he, he gestures with his hands. You do that when you're speaking in public. That's how you get seen. Take a look at uh, hey, Billy, on take, a, lunch counter. take a look at Billy Graham as an example. Billy Graham used to do this a lot. Hitler did it. Yeah. You now, know, Hitler did this. Billy Graham was looking for a cross. Yeah. And Beto O'Rourke is doing this, you know. Uh, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Trump can't talk with his hands because he didn't want to show those tiny fingers. <laughs> uh, he makes a little heart thing and he puts I was it in front say, of he him. Does some kind of no, he, he what he's doing. It's, it's like he's pointing. It no, it's like he point, he's pointing to his penis. That's what it looks like. Only he can't find it. Yeah, because he's got a mushroom dick, according to now, certain people who've been there. Has, Putin has good hand gestures. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was looking at Trump and Putin when they were meeting one another uh, initially, and Trump had that thing, and uh, Putin yeah. had a very strong uh, stance. Yeah, you know that yeah. statue that they had when he was running. New York had it somewhere that they had like this little shrimpy penis like that. And like his big stomach, that was funny. Uh, yeah. uh, th there was a mannequin of Trump that was going around, and this guy, I think Alex knows him, Lee Housekeeper bought it, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got the top part of it. He takes it all over the place, sets it, and uh, takes pictures of it in in different areas. Uh, uh, had you ever seen? Reactions. When people yeah. see it, does he like get their reaction or something? Well, he takes it down to like uh, Castro area and. In the in the San Francisco, that's the, the gay, the gay area, area. The yeah. Castro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw that movie Milk. That's how I know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've never been to the Castro, but I saw that movie Milk. Yeah. So yeah. so we got a lot of you know it, it, 
again, I'm going to say something I said the other night, and that is I think it's it's too early for anybody to be running uh, for anything. Way too early. We yeah, should, we should say for, we, we should Biden. we should say the 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 season doesn't start till January first of election year. Joe Biden said he's the most progressive guy that's running that's not running. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get the joke, Phil. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the fact is that why in the world? Somebody, I heard somebody say. And it's only 600 days till the next election, and I'm going, come on, we shouldn't even be, be, be running around saying I'm running for office. I mean, it's just too fucking early. We should make a law that you just don't start electioneering until the 1st of January. And again, like I said the other night, let's do away with the primaries. They serve no function at all. Let these parties go, have their convention, fight it out as to who's going to be the nominee, and then say, okay, Joe is our nominee, or Sam is our nominee, or Mary is our nominee. Put them out there, put them against the other guys, and have at it for about, let's say, three, four months, like they do in England. Okay? Why do we have to have this long period of time in which everybody, by the time Election Day arrives, is exhausted? Because this is America. Yeah, well, it, it's full of shit, you know. Alex, I, yeah. I think Trump started it because he decided that he was going to start running. Like, he's made the his— The day he was elected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, he's just started running from day one. But that was yeah. a very smart move, you know. Uh, no, because, it may be that by the time he it's time to vote for him, people are going to be sick and tired of his ass. No, it, it, right. if he if he said he was only going to be a one term president, then he would have been a lame duck. Now, he didn't say and, he was going to be a one term president, no, if but he, he didn't have that. to start running the day he was elected, which he did. Yes, and he's raising money from the day he got elected. Yeah, he formed this reelection committee. Uh, you know, I must get. 45 emails a day and 30 of them are from uh, the Republicans looking for money uh, and supporting Trump. And I bet half of them I bet half of them have fear tactics in them, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I um, you know, I just I, I just think that I'm I'm already sick of the next election. It's just too early. You said it. Uh, that's how I feel. You know, too. and and uh, I I just think that if we were to just limit ourselves to a year to for the whole process to take place, like people to announce they're running and so on and so forth, and then for the conventions to take place, no prime primaries, because I I got to tell you, how much does it cost in New Jersey to hold a primary for the Republicans oh, and the Democrats? Thirty-five cents. Fortune. Huh. <laughs> Millions upon millions of dollars that could be yeah, used somewhere else. And who does it benefit? It only benefits the two parties. It doesn't even benefit the third parties. Right. But it, 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 it somehow benefits them. I don't know why. And you say, well, Alex, but we've always had primaries. No, we haven't. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the beginning of the last century, we didn't have primaries. I don't think we had primaries until maybe the 20s or 30s. I think maybe the 30s. Uh, up until then, we know. just had conventions, and they went to the conventions and they fought it out. And maybe on the 20th ballot, somebody was the wasn't uh, that was the, the standard the smoke-filled room? Yeah, the, you yeah, know, the back room. But you know what? <laughs> what happens within the party? It's their job to come out with the best possible candidate. Uh, and I can't see us spending all this money and wasting all our time on primaries. I mean. Uh, who is it? MSNBC is holding in, I think it's April or May, their first debate? Oh, come what? on, yeah. Oh, I think man. I saw that, Alex, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. It's terrible. Gee, I can hardly wait. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's, it's terrible. And uh, I, I don't know, what do we do about it? And, and now look at the Democratic uh, field. Um, do you know who's number one right now in polling? Um, uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. No. Uh, no. Ben so then, it, then it must be uh, Bernie. San, uh, Bernie. Yeah, it's Bernie's first. Uh, uh, what's his name? Biden is second, and who's third? 
Um, oh, nope. uh, the woman, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kamala Harris. That's right. Number three. Oh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She has gained 18% in just the last month. Uh, she Good has. For a, her. Well, she, it, yeah. And I, I, you know, I think, quite frankly, <coughs> okay, it's just my opinion. Um, both Biden and Bernie should get out of the race. I don't think either. I think, uh, I think. Biden has a good chance. It could perhaps win simply because he wouldn't take any shit from Trump. But quite frankly, uh, I I think it's got to be one of the younger candidates. And I think it's got to be somebody who brings to the table a refreshing agenda. Okay. Uh, and... Um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think one of them just came out. Who was it? Was it uh, was it uh, Cory Booker? What was that? Did I lose? I didn't lose anybody. No. I don't know. That's no. the sound of when I usually lose somebody. Cory uh, Booker is uh, Booker is uh, pro, pro pot. What do you call that again? He's like hooking up with that actress now. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, the Hispanic actress. Because mm-hmm. I guess she's like, hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she she is hot and everything, but I guess you know. Is he doing that because he's trying to get the Latino vote? No, I think they were dating for a while. No, I mean, he, come on, he's black, so to begin with, he has a minority vote, okay? And she's Puerto Rican. Yeah. Um, uh, But I'm trying to think of uh, of, uh, what was, what was, uh, hmm. One of them came out pro pot. Uh, It might have been either Kamala Harris or it might have been... uh, might have been Pamela Harris it, said something, or it might have uh, been Cory Booker. In an interview, might have been Cory. I Booker. think it was Cory Booker. Was it Cory Booker? Booker? Yeah. So. Yeah. It sounds like Beto has also got a lot of baggage. I guess he was arrested for drunk driving. Uh, he was arrested for some other stuff. Uh, was was it some petty theft or Anybody something? Anybody hear this at all, or is he just? No, I was just uh, going to say, I was say, Alex, I haven't heard about it. No, he probably yeah. is listening to Michael Savage. Again. No, no, no. He was seventeen. <laughs> Oh, he was and, 17. And he apolo- but he apologized for it. You, you, and he apologized for making a joke uh, about his wife, which was nothing that he needed to apologize for. Well, when you're I running for he president. Had to apologize to his mother when he was 17 or whatever the hell. Yeah, I mean, come on. You're underage, Phil. You should know this as a cop. Don't they seal juvenile records or something? They do, but uh, he had he said it. Uh, oh, he let it go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, if we didn't thing. elect people who got arrested for president, then George Bush would have never become president. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, he hasn't waved his arms. Uh, let's see. Beto <laughs> arrest. Yeah, what's his we'll, we'll wait, Phil, while you go combing through everything to try and find Beto's arrests. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, arrested in 1990 for burglary and DWI. And that's from PolitiFact? Yeah. Yeah, well, I got to press the thing. What, 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 was, what was the bur- burglary? Yeah. What, 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 was the, what was the... Yeah, what did he burgle? Uh, well, usually it's a was house. Was it armed robbery or something? Or no, know? armed robbery is not burglary. That's, oh. uh, that's burglary is robbery. without a weapon? Uh, no, burglary is when you break into something. Oh, forget about Beto O'Rourke, because Beto O'Rourke is is not going to be the nominee of the party. Okay, uh, yeah. plain and simple. He I think a lot I, of money. I think, uh, I, uh, yeah, but you know that dries up really fast. You know when you aren't you aren't winning. As soon as you start losing some uh, primaries, you suddenly have a harder time getting the money. So disappears. Yeah, so he was arrested in, in El Paso. <clears throat> Uh, how old? Check. How old was he? Uh, I'm looking. It was 1990. So how old is where, he now? Where are you finding this? Politifact. Uh-huh. Um, 1998 uh, misdemeanor DWI arrest. Okay, that's nothing. It was dismissed. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, he he completed diversion. Uh, diversion is when uh, you do public service uh, yeah. and you yeah. s- oh, keep you your nose clean for a year. A yeah. then it's no, a, no, no, no. They don't. They they expunge it. So if it's expunged, then none of these things count. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, then shut up. But he okay. was arrested. All right. Oh, but he was convicted. arrested. But he was arrested. 
So I suppose you're not going to like my next topic. The governor... He says more than 20 years ago I was arrested not once but twice. <laughs> yeah, well, he's being honest, isn't he? Yeah. He's he hopped the fence at a university. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so basically he's owning up to his past. Yeah, it looks that way. Okay, so don't you admire that? No, I say tar and feather him. Okay. Anyway, uh, here's the other here's the other story, and this will, of course, drive Phil apoplectic. Uh, your governor in California has put a halt on um, uh, executions. Well, that that you know, we haven't had an execution in this state in how many years? Twenty? Uh, a long time. Long time. Yeah. And executions didn't have a halt. So what's the net effect of Gavin Newsom putting a well, halt? Well, he, he, but he he's eliminated. He, he but, halted. But, but he's officially putting a halt to it. Where before, well, no, before. Look, I have a friend on death row. Okay, right. uh, and uh, he's been there forever. God knows. Uh, and death row, by the way, is I think they've had to move it to another building. It's gotten so big. You know, because it just keeps filling up with people. I don't know why they give people the death penalty if they know that they're just going to sit there. They had uh, their own record company. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Texas but, has a fix for that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so, shoot them. Well, in Texas, they just, you know, it's like an assembly line. Uh, yeah, kill, uh, executing somebody, that's called Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Did exactly. you see uh, that they took the electric chair out of San Quentin? There never was yeah. an electric chair in San Quentin. Yeah. No, uh, there they wasn't. They disassembled it and took there, it out. There is no electric chair. There never was an electric chair in San Quentin. All right. No. I May saw it on the news. No. No. It was it, it, the gas chamber. Yeah. They probably, was, it, gas was it the gas chamber? It was yeah, this green yeah, chair. Yes, that was the, from the, the gas green chamber. Mile, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> California, no, it wasn't the green California mile. always <laughs> had the gas chamber, and before that it was like hanging. No. Okay. It never was an, an electric chair ever in San Quentin. Oh, everybody okay. had electric chair was Sing Sing in Austin. Right? I remember yeah. when they used to yeah. execute people, our lights would dim. Yeah. Well, they used to call the chair two things either the hot squat or uh, old Sparky. Remember that? Oh, yeah. The headlines would yeah, always yeah. be old, they're revving up old Sparky. Yeah. Well, you know, when you go to prison, that's what they give you: three hots and a squat. Yeah. Uh, and, a, and a cot. <laughs> uh, y yes, yes, Charlene. But Phil's trying to be funny. Excuse me. I know mm -hmm. he's always doing that. Yeah. So, um, you had mentioned. I I know you've mentioned it, but I can't remember. Did you ever tell us who the person was or what they did that you said you know someone on death row? Uh, yeah. His name is Dean, and um, he used to call. He used to call my show, and he used to write for my website, my, right. the Surfing he used Monkey. To call you thing called dead man talking and Did he call collect uh he um uh, he is he he well of course you know as he as he put it when i said uh you know i don't know what you're in there for because i never asked him uh he said well obviously i'm not in here for traffic tickets uh and uh then uh, my girlfriend one day said aren't you don't you want to find out what he did and I go, no. She said, well, let's go to the library and just look up his name in the stacks. And so we looked up his name, and it led us to an article in Red Book called A Kiss from My Killer. Um, Dean was uh, found guilty of killing uh, four women within well, a period of two weeks. Then, right? Yeah, and, and, and there's another fifth one which they've held uh, uh, unindicted so that in case he gets away with the other four, you know. And people say, well, you know, why he, oh, he killed them all? And he killed them all within about a two-week period. Wow. And I said, gee, he really got cranky. Mm. You know, I mean, but that's what he was in there for. Uh, and I didn't want to find out because the next time he called me, because he always had to call collect, I, I didn't accept the call. And then finally I did. And then I told him, I said, listen, I found out what you did because my girlfriend made me go to, you know, whatever. And I, I feel guilty about the fact that I didn't take your call. And he said, everybody gets that way. He said, that's, you know, that's par for the course. I always had very good conversations with him. Uh, but I haven't talked to him in, God, it's got to be 20 years now. You know. Well, they haven't killed him yet. No, he's still there. I'm sure he will die of old age there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, they commuted a sentence then, right? No, no. But because to begin with, there was the the well, first there was the halt on executions in California, but he wasn't part of that. But Charlie, the Rose Bird, Charlie, uh, Char thing. yeah, Charlie Manson was. Yeah, uh, now that was the Rose Bird. No, it wasn't she, Rose Bird. It was the Supreme Court. She was the Supreme Court justice that... Uh, no, she was a California uh, Supreme Court justice. Right. No, it wasn't Rose Bird. But she eliminated the no, uh, Phil, death penalty in Phil, California. The, no, she didn't. The Supreme Court did. Put a hiatus on all uh, executions in America. And that's... And why, yeah. why was she voted out of office? Well, I don't know uh, why she was voted out of office, but it wasn't because she stopped the executions in California. Okay. He's going to go look it up again. Yeah, well, at why least not? it keeps him busy and shuts him up for five minutes. Um, <laughs> no, it was a Supreme Court ruling that halted all executions in America, and that's why Charlie Manson didn't get executed. Okay, then they brought it back in, and my friend was found guilty at that time. And he was given the death penalty. But they've been so slow to execute people in California, they've never quite gotten around to him. And now they probably never will because uh, uh, your governor, uh, uh, has, has Gavin. Gavin Newsom, has stated that uh, you know he's putting a halt on all executions. So, in other words, the process of going ahead with them. I, just because you say that there haven't been executions in 20 years, it's not like uh, pe prosecutors haven't been trying to get people executed, and it's not like people haven't been trying not to get executed. But the criminal justice years. system and the courts in California— Very slow. Very slow, and, and, and because they want to be. I, you know, I would they, imagine they, so. Uh, and also, I mean, it was suggested, for instance, that they let, I think they did, let a lot of people out of California prisons because the population in the prisons was so high the state of California couldn't afford it. It was the nonviolent. Yeah, the nonviolent. Uh, they let them all out because they just, you know, it just it was getting, uh, it was getting out of hand. Yeah. From a and now they can standpoint. vote. Huh? At least if they went to Florida, they could vote. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, it it you know, uh, but all I'm saying is is that that uh, uh, I'm I'm happy Gavin Newsom has done that. He's always been out in front of everything. He's the guy that brought about the whole question of gay marriage. He made gay marriage legal in San Francisco, San Francisco. until somebody <laughs> went into court and made it illegal again. But he started the whole conversation across the country and all the moves to make gay marriage. Uh, or same-sex marriage uh, legal, and uh, he's he's the guy that should be credited with it. Yes, uh, Charlene. You know, I I hope I apologize when I'm changing the subject. You know, just let me know. But over the weekend, I saw some kind of magazine show, and when you said gay marriage, I just it popped into my head. They have a woman rent a mom, and it's for uh, people that are their parents don't believe in. Uh, you know, gay marriage, like they're they're not happy about you marrying someone, so your mother won't show up, so you rent her as your mom. I'm not kidding. I think they were serious about this. Really? And I was like, wow, that's wild, right? Well, She's that's like a, that, famous now for that. That's a fun way to end the program because oh. there's our oh. theme. <laughs> well, uh, tomorrow's feel free. Really? Yeah. Well, thank God they were all <clears throat> looking forward to that. <laughs> you know, um, uh, maybe you, off for uh, a week in Florida. What? Gonna be in Florida for a week. When? Starting when? He said. Start. Start, starting when, Jeff? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Oh, so wow. we'll be missing two people. So that means more of you have to take up the slack. Like Charlie will be here, and and. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm try to, you know, try to be right. here, and of course you'll try, you'll probably get give us a call from Florida because you always yeah. do. Anyway, oh, okay. photography meeting. Yeah, yeah, big deal. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna take shark pictures, right? Yes, you, I am. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, nice. everybody, right. Phil, thank you, thank you, Charlene, thank you, Charlie Wallace, thank you, Jeff Stein, everybody. Uh, you know, give a big wave goodbye to the audience out there. So they can, yeah, and I'll wave back at you. There we go. 
there they are. They're gone for the night now. I will hang up on all of them. I will make the line available so that Jack Bishop can use it for the intersection, which is next over most of this gab net. Uh, tomorrow night uh, at 8.30 Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, it will be the Arena with the Franchise MC, our little sports show that happens once a week. And then at 9.30, uh, Damien is back with us again, another episode of The Exchange. And then tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, I will be back on with another episode of The Ramble. Same time. Same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.